Hello class, uh, welcome to the first lecture in um, the history of the American West. So in lecture one, we're gonna start off by discussing the course in general. So this is a master course analysis on the history of the American West and its impact on American history. This course is going to explore the past of the American West, considering it as both a geological area in the Western United States and an, influ <clears throat> an influential ideology that impacted cultures, economies, and politics from the early frontier days to present day America. Through the study of historical writing and practical research, I want you to be able to analyze the various cultures and forces that contributed to making the American West a distinct and remarkable aspect of the nation's history. Now you may recognize that from the <clears throat> description of the class in the, in the syllabus, but I wanted to read that out loud to you in the, in the first lecture so everyone was very clear on what we're doing here, okay? So in this first uh, module of the class, the goal here is that I want you to be able to understand and identify how traditional Western history is different from modern Western history. So we're going to study a little history, historiography of the American West here in the first module to give you an idea of some prevailing ideas behind what the West was about, okay? So, class, it's very common for most historiographies that <clears throat> to include the American West, that they'll begin with Frederick, Frederick Jackson Turner and his significance of the frontier in American history. Uh, that He wrote that in 1893. The late 19th century was a very white, male, Anglo-centric environment, particularly in academia. And the views of early historians of the American West continue to be male-centric adventure stories that continued into the 1950s and 1960s. And later there was a shift and began roughly right after the Civil Rights Movement, and historians began to explore women and people of color's roles in the West. This shift in historiography on women and minorities in American West began around the 1980s, and they were appropriately dubbed the New Western Historians. These historians were mostly agreed to be led by authors like, or, you know, historians like Patricia Limerick. The result was that these two opposing ideals would collide, not in, you know, regarding not only the value and significance of the American frontier, but the values and significance of America itself. At the heart of this comparison is the American identity. Frederick Jackson Turner saw an American identity became the culmination or evolution of an exceptional group of people that he called pioneers. They challenged and conquered a wild frontier, according to him, and in so doing created both an intellectually and socially unique and democratic American identity. Now, Patricia Limerick and other New Western historians saw the American identity as a white European conqueror, colonizers that exploited native peoples and natural environments, in the geographic West and that they deserve repudiation, not celebration. The new Western historians that followed Limerick were intent on producing some pretty negative insights, if we're being honest, and some racial tropes from the American West that aimed at diminishing white Europeans and their accomplishments. This um, included the works of Frederick Turner. So what we want to do in this module is explore the works of Frederick Turner and Patricia Limerick and then together we can better understand these conflict of ideas and culture. So let's begin with Frederick Jackson Turner. Turner describes his frontier in three parts, open and free land, stages of settlement, and the creation of an American identity. In his famous thesis, he does explain that there were large areas of open and free land, where a seduct you know, they, these were a seductive lure that drew these brave pioneers to settle and claim this land for their benefit. These pioneers were motivated to escape the confines of the state. This is why the frontier line kept moving westward into unclaimed lands, causing waves of settlement. The first wave came in the form of adventurous pioneers who would, in his words, tame the wilderness. They would quickly be followed by a second wave of immigrants who sought to build villages and towns and schools and, and courthouses. Then there was the third wave, and there were enterprising capitalists who sought to profit off all of the valuable resources the frontier had to offer. The settling of the wilderness with schools and courthouses would then drive the adventurous pioneers further west into more unclaimed lands and wilderness lands, moving the frontier line with them in a cyclical nature. 
Turner's argument for the role of the West in the development of the American identity was grounded in the idea of conversion. He describes the wilderness as a trial by fire that converted European immigrants into American pioneers. And it was in this conversion they found their identities. Uh, the men and women, he explains, exhibited American qualities, strength, boldness, independence, ingenuity. They used this to convert the savage wilderness into civilization. Turner describes this. Um, advance the frontier, excuse me, in this advance, the frontier is the outer edge of the wave, the meeting point between savagery and civilization. Now, I'll stop here for a moment to point out that this is some of the terminology that the New Western historians have a problem with. Savagery, um, free land, open land, as if no one was there, when in fact we know that there were Native Americans already living there, and there were Spanish colonial people already living there. And <clears throat> and so and, uh, to continue on, we'll get back to that in a minute. His thesis on the frontier began a generational outlook on Americans who used his ideas to describe themselves and what it meant to be American. This is how he developed. He was responsible for developing the American identity. Uh, also, why the West is considered in frontier and pioneer. These, these things are considered the process that developed what it meant to be an American. The, the, what the words he used earlier, the tough, rugged, bold, independent. <clears throat> so, uh, they used his ideas to define what our very democracy meant. American democracy came from the forest and its destiny drove its material conquest. But the materialism of the pioneer was not the dull, contented materialism of an old fixed society. It was something new. This is what Turner pointed out in his thesis on the significance of the Western frontier on American history. It has its merit based firmly on its own scholarship and its schol in the scholarship that it's promoted. It has flaws. He even admitted himself. Uh, some particularly important information in people and causes were clearly missing, but it did accomplish the start of a long intellectually stimulating line of scholarship in historical academia. Now, moving on to the new Western historians. The beginnings of what came to be called the new Western history began in the 1980s with Patri Patricia Nelson Limerick's book, A Legacy of Conquest, The Unbroken Past of American West. She began a very thorough opposition to Turner's thesis, which came to be called the New Western Histor History. And it focused on the idea that Western expansion was colonial, imperial in nature, and it was heartily influenced by the federal government, not by exceptional frontiersmen or pioneers. More importantly, the New Western historian's stance was that there was no frontier, nor was there any free land, because it was already occupied, as I mentioned earlier, by indigenous people, who were mistreated and displaced as a result of this expansion. The idea that the frontier was a place and not a process was put forward by Limerick as the basis for her argument. Turner had described the frontier as a process that had changed European settlers into Americans, where Limerick describes the frontier as an occupied place that European settlers conquered and subdued. Now, the perspective of the new Western historians was inspired by progressive era historian Richard Hofstetter. I hope I said his name right. Hofstadter, Hofstadter, excuse me, when he described what he felt was missing in Turner's 1893 thesis. He lists the exploitive and wasteful nature of American agriculture, the destruction of the environment and its natural beauty, the failure of free land to produce more free and equal society, the willingness to commit violence, and the ruthlessness of the pioneers towards Spaniards and Indians, as reasons Turner's thesis contains so many holes in its incompleteness. Now, Limerick, a leading New Western historian, advocated eliminating, eliminating the word frontier itself from describing West, westward expansion in American history. She describes the word frontier as containing sexist and ethnocentric connotations that would be better left from academic con uh, conversations. Now, the, um, the point of the New Western historians was to refute the conversations of the Turinian historians is what they came to be called. Turinian historians believed in um, ex American exceptionalism and all of that, you know, that it encompassed the, the, all the adjectives that Turner used to describe the pioneers. Um, whereas Limerick and the New Western historians focused more on, you know, the incompleteness or what was left out of 
his his thesis, including the indigenous people and the Spaniards that were conquered and subdued, as as it were, in, in how it was described. Um, so what we want to do this week is explore the, the, the readings that were assigned and see if you could draw your own conclusions about who was right, who was wrong. Is there truth in the middle? Um, or, you know, who uh, the paper that you write should have your opinion on um, who you agree with or disagree with and why. Um, so make sure you do your reading this week and uh, take some notes from this lecture and I'll see you in class next week. Thank you.